Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host Jacob Shorba, and while I didn't expect to be doing this video so soon, here we are. Right? Um, our plan was to not really talk too much about the draft until the bye week. That's what we did last year. We had our bye week mock draft. We had something after the season. And then we had maybe four or five throughout the offseason, just as things updated. Well, shit's hit the fan, guys. Not sure if you saw, Jaguars are 0-4. And this is the only team, as of recording this, that has four losses on the year. The only way that Jacksonville is not the worst team in the NFL is if Tennessee gets blown out today. That's pretty much the only way. And they're playing a Miami Dolphins team that has uh, Tyler Huntley starring, I think, although technically he's a Pro Bowl quarterback. So you got that going for him. But that's where Jacksonville is. This was supposed to be an incredible season for the Jaguars. Whether or not we actually believe that, that was the expectation that the organization set for itself. That's the expectation the owner had. And at the end of the day, like, regardless of who you're blaming things on, it's not even close. I mean, in fact, it's pretty much the exact opposite. This will be easily one of the most disappointing seasons in Jacksonville history. And I feel like that's something that we've had to say too often in the last few years. So what we're going to do here, before I make this pick or trade it or any of that, we're going to discuss the quarterback situation because I think that's important to at least touch on. Now, I'm not saying this is in, don't take this as in, I'm like, okay, F Trevor Lawrence, we're done. The verdict's out, he sucks, and he's not the franchise quarterback. I don't have an official verdict right now. I, I think the whole point of this year was to get your answers. And even if he's not, the situation that Jacksonville has put itself in by signing him early, which I I've already given my thoughts, and I could give plenty more, but it's just it's just a rant at the end of the day. Doing that has caused the Jaguars to be in a situation where I don't think you can really consider quarterback unless it is really that bad. I mean, we're talking about he has to perform like Daniel Jones did last year, and arguably worse than that. And Daniel Jones got hurt, to be fair. So, I don't think it's super likely, but I do want to at least give you my thoughts on it and give you my thoughts as well on what I would be probably leaning towards if we had an option. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, do you trade the pick? Because if Jacksonville is picking first overall, they're going to have a very interesting decision that they can make. Because it's if you're not taking a quarterback, do you want an elite player, someone that is... I think you have an arguably generational player at the top of this class in Travis Hunter. Or do you use that to trade for multiple first rounders in the hopes that you can hit on those picks, you can find good values, and maybe if things go south with Trevor Lawrence that you set yourself up in the future to be able to figure out the quarterback position, even if you aren't the worst team in the NFL, that you load up on draft capital to have a chance to fix it. Right. And so these will be questions that that we'll kind of talk about in this video. And we're going to spend a lot of our time talking about the first overall pick because it's, it's the biggest conversation. But getting to quarterback, I just want to do a little bit of analysis on Trevor Lawrence here. We showed these in the last video uh, where we did the game recap. Week four is added, though. So I will say one nice thing about Trevor Lawrence to start he's better at fumbling than he ever has been. Congratulations. That's pretty nice. Um, but regression in a lot of other areas, right? So one of these that we'll start with is the adjusted completion rate, which we talked about this a little bit in the game recap, and it's actually worse now than what I had thought at the time. So in 2024, in this year, if everything went perfect on Trevor Lawrence's throws, meaning there's no drops, receivers catch what they're supposed to catch. He would have 64.3% of his passes complete. That is not even average for what you would expect a normal completion rate to be. So even if you take out all the mistakes by receivers, of which there's an argument, right? This has been the worst team as far as drops in the NFL since like 2021, something crazy like that. 
So that's an argument, but it is still 64.3% at best. The next closest season was his first year in the league where he at least had a 72.4%, 8% higher than this year. That's a pretty jarring number. Not something you want to see. That's one thing that I do want to note. Um, aside from that, touchdowns and interceptions. It looks fine, right? Four touchdowns and one interception. Obviously, we watch the games, though. And there's things that you're going to see that are good that don't go into stats necessarily. There's things you're going to see that are bad that also don't go into stats. Now, they will go into PFF in some ways. So, for example, something I want to know. Turnover-worthy plays this year. He has five so far. Now, given that the percentage isn't really as bad as other seasons, in fact, this would be the second lowest that he's had throughout his career. It doesn't really look that bad. But if he was having these passes intercepted that should have been intercepted, he would have more interceptions than touchdowns right now. And he's gotten very fortunate to only have 20% of these turnover-worthy plays converted. And it's almost felt to me, like watching him in these games, as if he's almost scared to take chances at times because he's afraid he's going to turn it over or he's got questions about his confidence or his accuracy. That's something that's kind of stood out to me. But putting the point simply, this is Trevor Lawrence's arguably worst year as a quarterback. At a bare minimum, if it continues along the way that's going right now, this will end up being at least as bad as 2021. Talking about passing grades, pretty much regressed every single week. Now, if we sort by weeks, you can see he did a little bit better in week four than he did compared to week three, given week three was a pretty bad game. Obviously, Jacksonville didn't even come in and compete in that game. They got blown out by Buffalo. You go to previous seasons. 2023 was not some impressive season from Trevor Lawrence, but we sort these passing grades you got three bad games in here, and everything else is at least above average, right? And it's a good passing grade on the season, 78.6. This year has been a massive regression. I, I, I cannot put that into words well enough. It has been a massive regression in terms of how Trevor Lawrence has performed. We go back to 2022. You're going to see there's a lot more of the bad games especially earlier in the season, week 16 thrown in here as well. But a lot of these later games, really good performances. Simply put, Trevor Lawrence just is not playing at the level that you would have hoped for for a quarterback that got extended. And we could have a whole discussion about why they shouldn't have done that. And I'm sure people will, some will disagree, right? And that's fine. You guys can all have your opinions on it. I was someone that made it very clear this offseason that I would not extend him. And I felt like it needed to be made very clear that the way he has performed so far, which was better than what we're getting this year by quite a bit, actually, that still was not acceptable to get that kind of contract or even to be fully bought in that he's the franchise quarterback. And if you were not 100% sure that he was the guy, you couldn't make the extension. Because the five million years, or sorry, five million dollars, or whatever it may be that you save a year, say he would have, if he had a great year this season, say he would have matched Dak Prescott, right? 60 million a year, five million more each season. Given that only three years of that are guaranteed, that's really all that's going to matter at the end of the day, you're essentially just to save 15 million dollars, risking the next five years of this organization because you have the two rookie years remaining which have been factored into the extension now and the three years guaranteed of the extension that was always the problem with it now this leaves us in an interesting situation because well i may sit here right now and i want to make this clear verdict is not fully out there is still time. We need to see more from Trevor Lawrence, and especially for this team and the situation they put themselves in, they're going to give him more time than he deserves, whether or not whether or not he needs it. 
But if he was not extended, and I had to say where I leaned right now, I would be looking heavily into this quarterback class. That is where I would be. Now, that's not reality. Trevor Lawrence is here for four more seasons, most likely. And sure, there are things they can do to try to get out of it. If you try to trade him. If you're willing to take on a big cap hit to not have him here. Those are options. But they're also going to be options that come at a heavy cost. If we have to get to that point. So this is where we are. I will say this though. And this is mainly where I wanted to go with the quarterback conversation. If I was looking at this class right now. And saying I have to get someone. Trevor Lawrence isn't the guy. We have to take a quarterback. If that was the case, which if it goes really, really poorly this year, it is possible it could get to that. Unlike, very unlike, they'll say, but possible. I would say right now Jalen Milwer would be my guy. I think what this franchise needs at quarterback and what I hope Trevor Lawrence can prove us wrong on and be is someone who's going to expect perfection, someone who's going to bust his ass for it, someone who's not going to be all right with just getting a little bit better. I think that the drive for Trevor Lawrence, whether or not it's there, has been extremely questionable. His interview at the last game was one of the most frustrating interviews I've ever watched. Seemingly all right with not having a good game, with losing, with being 0-4, that these things are somehow in any way acceptable. Or that's something you can build off. I just think the standard that we've set for this franchise is incredibly low. And to me right now, with the limited knowledge that I have on this next class, a quarterback, because I will be honest, we should not have to be looking into this. We should have our franchise quarterback, and we should be looking at our positions like tackle and like cornerback or edge rusher, whatever it might be. Safety, I think, would be one for sure, too. We shouldn't have to look at quarterback, but off the limited things that I've seen this year and watching the games, I think Jalen Milrow is that stock-up guy that's getting better that I believe can be the leader in the face of a franchise. And if I had to choose of any of these quarterbacks right now, that would be the one. And just to back up some of this improvement, from this season. In 2024. Best game of the season. Coming against Georgia. If you all watched on Saturday night. You know what I'm talking about. Best performance as a passer. His one interception was not even a turnover worthy play. Was basically a drop pass. And it was still a good throw. He has been playing. At an extremely high level. And one of the most impressive things about Milro Has been his ridiculous ability. To make big time throws. Among some of the highest numbers that you will see from a quarterback. So you have a great deep passer. You have someone who has been very accurate this year. Especially compared to recent seasons. Where you just see a steady increase here. From Jalen Milrow. But this is someone that you look at the concerns. Coming into this year. That being things like accuracy. That being things like playing under pressure. He has been far better in all of those regards. Look at 2023, for example, 44 sacks. He has five this year in four games, and they'll play a lot more. But he would be on pace right now to have roughly less than half of what he had in 2023. Look at passing pressure. This year, graded out positively. Under pressure, 67.4. You're never going to have a really high number there. It's very rare that you do. 2023, 51.6. He is a player that has just gotten better at so many things. And when I listen to him and who he is as a person and his work ethic, that would be the guy I would buy in on right now. But with that said, getting back to the mock draft, we can't pick a quarterback. It has to be worse. It has to be basically unsalvageable to pick a quarterback at this point. But if that extension wasn't there and this was the result we got all season, I would be heavily considering investing in one. So 
next conversation for us with the first overall pick. Even though we're not going to trade this here because I don't want to get into trading too much, especially just because we do not know for a fact who's going to take a quarterback this year, what teams are willing to trade up, especially given that the Bryce Young trade up didn't go so well, we're going to stick put. But if we were to trade or to consider it, what are my thoughts on it? I think at the end of the day for me, well, I think Travis Hunter is clearly the best player in this class just because of the elite play on both sides of the ball. I think there are enough great players up here, especially at positions of need, to where if I was sitting in the number one spot and I got an offer from a team that was maybe picking five, six, seven, somewhere around there, that wanted to move up for either a quarterback or they wanted Travis Hunter, if I was getting a good offer, like, say, three first-round picks, it depends, right? Because, I mean, last year, we know Minnesota tried to offer three first-rounders, plus I think a little bit more, to move up for Drake May. Going from, <coughs> sorry, going from 11 to 3, and that was declined for Drake May. We know what the Arizona Cardinals were going to ask for, for someone to move up the four. That was going to be close to three first rounders. That was for Marvin Harrison Jr. So what's the price going to be for Travis Hunter? I think it's that high. I think you're talking about something like three first rounders. And maybe there's the quarterback here instead, like a Jalen Milrow, that rises this year, that proves it over the whole course of the season, knocks it all out of the park, that someone says, I have to get this guy on my team. I know this pick is available. I'm going to make the move. And if I'm Jacksonville, as much as I would love to have Travis Hunter here, as much as I think that would be just a home run pick for this franchise, I would rather have the capital to set myself up in the future to have more shots and trust myself to make these picks. Now, if it was Trent Balky in charge and he was going to pick Travis Hunter or just take whoever the heck he wants in the first round or he wants to load up on second second day picks. No, like just take Travis Hunt, right? I don't trust him as much. But with the new GM, I would definitely be looking at trade this pick. So that's my thoughts on that. But we are staying put at number one after all this talk about quarterback, all this talk about trading down. We're keeping it simple. I just want you guys to know at least what my thoughts are right now. And this has to be Travis Hunter. And it will be a huge question of where he ends up playing in the NFL. I think he could play both sides. I don't know how long he lasts there. I know he's going to get paid a ridiculous amount of money to do that. But we'll see. you know. And I like the idea of maybe putting him as your cornerback on defense and having him come in on offense a little bit as he can to be a wide receiver. I think that's something that would be very effective. So, kind of like he's doing now. So, we're up at 33. Finally get to talk about some better players here. Denzel Burke is sitting here. Obviously, we just drafted a corner, so we're not really looking too heavily at him. Hampton is a really good running back. Um, I don't think, from what I've seen so far this year, that he's done much to help his stock. And I don't think that's something you're really considering here, especially with a loaded class. Now, JT Tui Malowau, someone I'm really high on. Tyler Booker is another guy I'm really high on for me. Looking at all these names, if you've listened to me before, you know I really like this guy. You know he's probably the biggest my guy I have in this class. This would be Josh Simmons for me. Easily. And if I was able to trade, I would have traded into the first round for Josh Simmons, especially to get that fifth-year option. I do think that's very valuable. And we saw what the cost of the fifth-year option was this last year, interesting enough, when Carolina traded with Buffalo. Essentially, moving back from 120 to 200 was roughly what the trade was. So we know that's the cost, and I would pay that to get someone like that locked up. So we'll take a look here before I make this pick just at how Josh Simmons has been playing this year. I think this is a player that's really smart. I think this is someone you've clearly seen improve every year. 
I think you can watch the interviews on him. He's impressive. You watch the film. He is very athletic. He's smart. And someone that I think has impressive strength for apparently being 310 pounds. But even with some of these opponents not being the best of opponents, look at week five. He's grading out with an 80-plus pass blocking grade. That's great stuff, right? Just allowed his first pressure of the year in his last game. That's good stuff, right? Like, this, this is impressive to see from a player. Whether or not other people see Josh Simmons the same way that I do right now, I think he's a first-round player. I don't think there should be much doubt about that, especially in a class that lacks a lot of first-round prospects, which was something I mentioned before, whether or not on YouTube. I know I've talked about it on Twitter. It's starting to get noticed. I know Jim Nagy has been uh, talking about a little bit about how some teams may not even have 10 true first-round grades for this draft class. Think about how crazy that is. Usually it's around... <coughs> sorry. Usually it's around 25 players or so that you have in a class that's first round. This year, not even 10, arguably. And I get it. Like, I look at my draft board, which I've got to do some updates on. I haven't touched it for about a week and a half or so. But it is hard for me to find more than that for first rounders. And I've forced some first round grades on there. I'm going to have to change it. But it's hard. This is not a class that's top heavy. In the sense that there's not a lot of first-round players. I think there's some really great talents at the top. But I think it falls off really fast after that. And so, would a player to me that's arguably worth a late first-round pick, like Josh Simmons, and maybe worth even more than that, be a steal at this point? Absolutely. So, that's going to be our pick. Another thing to note about him, has experience playing at right tackle too. Also has experience at left tackle in all his years at Ohio State. Came over from, I think, San Diego. Yep, San Diego State. He's easily going to be the pick here. But just other guys I would have considered at this point. I'm a big fan of Jaden Roberts. Maybe he falls to our next pick. I think he'd be a really nice right guard, although PFF has not graded him out super well. Um, Shamar Stewart. If you love Trayvon Walker... You're going to love Shamar Stewart. It's another like crazy athletic kind of guy with crazy size. But he's actually playing really well this year. So he's one I'm going to keep my eye on that I think will probably make it into the first round at the end of the day. But he is worth talking about here because we're not talking about the first overall pick, right? Tyler Booker I talked about already. He hasn't grayed out super well this year. I'm not sure that's like a great reflection of how he is as a prospect. I do value him quite a bit. I think the value would be pretty nice here at pick number 33. And then Tui Malowal is having another solid season. I kind of see him like, uh, I don't know if I can say his name right, Tui, Tui Pelotu off the Chargers. If anyone remembers him from the draft, came out of USC. He's been a consistent good player for the Chargers since the start of his career. Maybe things are going different this year for all I know, but he was pretty good last year. He was an impactful player. I think he got like eight sacks or something great like that. So that's kind of how I see Tui Malowal. So this would be where you start to consider him. But probably not the first round status that we had for him coming in this year. But this is going to be Josh Simmons for me. Now I did want to note, I don't know if this will follow me. No, it will not. But not sure if you guys saw, Mil they actually have Milrow going second in this one and I think these are Trevor Sikma's rankings and he's got Milrow up at sixth overall on here which is kind of crazy to see all right pick 65 I'm gonna be real even if Carson Beck fell this far which this is kind of crazy for where have where to have him ranked I don't think I would touch it like maybe day three but if I'm not getting the kind of quarterback that I want to develop, which I don't think Carson Beck would be that guy. I just don't see that being something that would work out for Jacksonville, even with him being a Jacksonville native. I would probably wait longer, and so definitely not going to be an option here. But we've got some fun names. 
Tyreek Williams kind of gave me some Devon Hamilton vibes as a player. Just a, uh, I think more than a nose tackle, but still plays nose tackle. Be a good player on the interior. Now, Kyle Manung guy. This might be a fun one that we go with here that not everyone would necessarily like, but someone I do think is going to be pretty good in the NFL. Other names to consider, Parker Brailsford. He hasn't had a great year this season, but if anyone was going to be anything similar to what Jason Kelsey is, Brailsford's probably the closest. Just this undersized guy that fights the death in the trenches and plays surprisingly good football. And that's what he's done this year, right? Good pass blocking grade, not a great run blocker, which isn't surprising, right? He's not a guy with the size to do it. They've got him listed as 290 here. There was some talk about him being 275. This is not close to what you have for centers usually. Centers are usually at least 300 pounds in the NFL. So Brailsford's an outlier, but I think a player that would be worth a shot, especially if he fell. Other names to throw out here, I think Evan Stewart could be a solid player to put a flyer on, but not someone we've seen much out of this year. Um... Keon Sapp was someone I liked as well. Shamar Turner, another guy I liked. Of course, Sapp had the really bad play this week. Uh, if you watch the Alabama-Georgia game, where he just got destroyed on a deep throw, basically lost all integrity, broke downhill when he was the free safety on the play, it appeared, and then missed the tackle after. So kind of rough. Uh, got to clean that up. Shamar Turner, I think, is a, uh, a fun interior defensive lineman. With a lot of upside. And you got other names you could throw out here too. That maybe we would consider. Ty Felton. He's a draft riser. Right now he's just having a crazy productive season. We'll actually look at his numbers really quick for you guys. 637 yards in 5 games played. And a 90.9 passing. Or sorry. Offensive grade. It's good stuff. So Ty Felton I think would be a player to consider. At this point. I would say, just with how I would value players here and considering the fit, we're going to get a little little bit weird with this one. We're going to give some love to Kyle Manung guy. Four games played this year, 589, 589 yards. One thing with Kyle Manung guy that I think would be really valuable to Jacksonville is getting in a guy who's a good pass protector. This guy will literally deplete defenders when he's blocking for this team. I think he's a really good running back. He's someone that is definitely rising up my board. Easily worth this pick. You can debate all day if you would take a running back here. But if you're looking for talented players that should translate really well to the NFL, I think Kyle Manunga is one of those guys. And maybe even someone who at some point could be a, uh, a starter for an NFL team. Now, I would say the counter-argument, perhaps, is what if he's sort of similar to Tank Bigsby, where I think he's a really tough runner, but also a really fast runner. But at the same time, you know, is this a player that necessarily starts? So I think you could have some comparisons there between the two, but I really like Manungai. I think he could be an RB1 in the NFL. And you're also coming into year five of Travis Etienne, where you don't know if you're going to extend him. And there are, I think, some fair questions about whether you should. I mean, this is a split backfield at this point in Jacksonville. This last game was, I think, 11 carries for Travis Etienne and 7 for Tank Bigsby. And I'm pretty sure Bigsby didn't touch the ball after his, uh, his huge run and then getting a couple snaps at the goal line. So might have been even worse. But we're going to have some fun with this one. We're going to take Kyle Manungai. Add him to this backfield, get this running game going a little bit better. And you're going to have free agency too, to address some of these issues. Now our next pick coming up is the Minnesota pick, which is crazy enough at 95 now because Minnesota is just this incredible team right now. I think at this point, considering the players on the board, considering what Jacksonville is going to be locked into, you know, I would consider... Ty Felton here, but I do think that the wide receiver room's pretty set. And you've also got a player I think could 
pretty easily start for Jacksonville. Now, he did just have a rough week. Maybe some people don't like that. But I do think Keon Sab is a good player. And like I said, rough week, right? That's going to push down this grade on the season. But I think he's he's a good, good safety at the end of the day. And this year, like, he's been someone who's been productive in turnovers. Someone who's just consistently, I think, played pretty well in everything he's done. It's just a question of, is that big play against Georgia what you are, or was that just kind of a, an outlier, I guess? That's my big concern I would have with Keon Sapp. But overall, you know, good size, good player, should be able to start. And you've got some obvious questions back there with Andre Sisco in his final year, struggling as of now. And then on top of that, you've got Antonio Johnson, who we could look at his grades really quick on the season. I actually haven't looked at his for game four, but he has not had that great of a season. So week four, 52.6 defensive grade. And I'm not saying I'm like completely out on Antonio Johnson at this point, but I do think given his performance and Andre Cisco not being extended so far, you got to consider adding to the safety room. And even if they were both here, You've got injuries that have happened there with uh, with Andre Cisco. So that's going to be our pick at 95. We'll see what falls to 102. So at this point, I'm not looking at any of the top guys. I'm not looking for a developmental quarterback. And I think Drew Aller, to be quite honest, is probably a first-round guy. Not necessarily an early one, but I think someone that maybe a team would take a chance on late. Just a lot of really good tools to develop. And he might also be a guy that ends up returning to college to try to be the top guy in 2026. I I could absolutely see that. I would say of the other options, I know a lot of people like Trey Harris. He's a good player. Ty Felton is still sitting, sitting here. He might actually be our pick, although I think he should have been gone a long time ago. If we need a linebacker, I'd be all over Jay Higgins. See if there's any names hiding down the board. I have not watched Nick. Um, Won't even attempt to say that last name. So I just want to say that now. I know some people really like him. That Jonah Coleman is a really good running back this year for Washington. Someone I think that could be in the conversation with some of the top guys, but probably clearly the bottom one. Tez Johnson is sitting here as well. There's a lot of good names sprinkled sprinkled around in here. And just to talk about what this class really is, I think it's a class that the top really just has a select few guys that are special. And then it really falls off quick to your borderline late first round guys. And then from that point on, there's a lot of value in this draft. And I think when you're picking in round four here, there's going to be a top player available still. I think you're going to have someone that probably has a second round grade for you. Because naturally, given that some players will fall, considering how you see your board and just the value of this draft, I think you're going to have some guys like that. So Trey Harris would be one of them. Ty Felton is another. Um, As far as who I would take, in this situation. I think I would probably have to lean with Ty Felton. I know they're both really good receivers, but what Felton has done this year has been great. And I would like to take the chance on that. And we're really just kind of shooting for upside at this point. You could also argue for Tez Johnson. I think that's the other guy you can consider. Similar to to Felton and Harris, I think he would already be gone, though. But we're going to take Ty Felton at 102. So we got two more picks here, 132, 137. We're just going to generally go with best players available or guys that fit really well. Saw Trevor Etienne went off the board there. Haven't really been super impressed by him this year. So... I was a big fan of Urasek. I will say that. For some reason, he has just not got the ball this year. 
I don't even think he's their tight end three. No, sorry, he's he is their tight end three. He's not even a tight end two, so I don't know what's up there. Looking at the rest of this board, I do see some players I really like that are listed pretty low. Walter Nolan is one of them, having a really good year. I might have honestly picked him above some of these other guys, just didn't see the name down here. But he's going to be our pick pretty easily. I think he's a good interior defensive lineman. If I recall, he's someone who can move around the defensive line a little bit. We'll actually take a look at that really quick. Yeah, so throughout his career, I mean, you see him playing outside the tackle a little bit 2023 this year. A lot more inside. But he's a player that can generally do it all. And then with this final pick, I know we already took a receiver, but I think that this will be either Tez Johnson or Jimmy Horn Jr., who I think is a little bit overlooked of a player. I really don't know where he goes. And while I don't care a lot for the Colorado program, which if you follow me, you know that's the case. I would actually probably take Jimmy Horn Jr. I think that he's someone who's going to bust his ass in the NFL. I think he's someone who really works hard to earn what he does. I think he's a really good route runner. I think it's just simply a question of size, right? And at least you're probably getting someone who's a really good part of the rotation and would fit what you want to have for the culture going forward. So maybe there's a better player here, but that's going to be the guy I go with for 137. And, you know, as we get more players down, scout more guys, sure there will be a name I'd, I'd consider a little bit more there. <coughs> so that's what we got here. Got just a few more picks wrapping this up. Then we'll take a look back at everything. So... Once this loads. So first pick for us, we've already talked about it, right? We had our quarterback conversation, what you would have done. Like I said, if if it was a matter of actually having a choice, I think right now what you've seen would make you at least have to consider if there's a good quarterback prospect, or I'll say great quarterback prospect, that could really sell you, you'd have to consider it. I think right now the guy would have to be Jalen Milrow, or maybe it would be a Cam Ward. I didn't really mention him a ton, but I'd be a bigger fan of Milrow. And then if you're not taking a quarterback, are you trading out? I would personally do that. My plan, if I was picking first overall and I wasn't taking a quarterback, I would probably want to be moving back somewhere in the 5 to 10 range. And I would be trying to land a guy maybe like a Benjamin Morrison. Where I get a guy that's going to be a high-impact player who's played great against really good competition, going to be a really good scheme fit if you want to continue playing press man in the future. It fills a big need. That would be the best-case scenario for me. Getting a bunch of picks, still getting a great player. But we take Travis Hunter here. You can't complain about it. He's a phenomenal player, and the question of what he's going to do in the NFL really is not a bad thing. It just shows how talented of a player he is. And then 33, taking Josh Simmons, great value there. Player I think should go in the first round. Someone I think is going to be a franchise left tackle. I think at this point, you could really consider him being the guy on the left side if you want. You have your choice there. Whoever's better goes on the left. Whoever isn't goes on the right. But... You'd have your Cam Robinson replacement. You'd feel pretty good about it. And then Kyle Manungai, just getting a damn good football player. Someone that's going to help you out in pass protection as well. Going to be a really violent, tough runner. And probably going to get overlooked in this class. You know, Keep in mind, by the way, last guy to come out of Rutgers that was picked, I think, in the draft at all was Isaiah Pacheco. There might be another name in there that I don't know of. But this is the next like somewhat known prospect to come out of Rutgers. So that factors into my thoughts a little bit, but Manungai is a really good player. And then Keon Sab, we'll have to see how he responds after a, a down week, but I think he could be a good starting safety and you could develop him for a year or two if you want, take it slow with him. 
but he'd be someone I'd be very interested in. Ty Felton, just really good value here. Same with Walter Nolan. Just players that are playing well that have no business being available. And then Jimmy Horn Jr., just to kind of address the potential needs in the slot. Say you move on from Christian Kirk, say he gets traded at the deadline, something like that. You're going to be looking at that position, and I think this could be a cheap option for the team and someone who could maybe earn their way into a starting role in the NFL at their ceiling. So, hey, that's what we've got. Long video, a lot of conversation to be had, but this is where we are, right? And uh, it's unfortunate, but hopefully this team is able to, to get some stuff together. Um, I don't think it's going to happen now, but I think they've really got to got to get off. Uh, what's the saying? Gosh, uh, Hooper, get off the pot. Th that's where this team is, right? They've got to turn things around quick because you've got a quarterback that you invested a first overall pick in that is on the verge of being a bust with the way he's playing. And so we'll see what happens. Hopefully they, they get it together, but we'll just see and we'll be here for it all. So with that said, I want to thank our, our channel members from the Till We Die rank and the On the Prowl rank, uh, Premier Nasir 904 and Mr. Dolphin and everyone else involved. If you guys want to join as a channel member, you're more than welcome. It is not a requirement. And if you do it, I appreciate it. But in no way, shape, or form does that change anything. I love having you all here to talk to. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know who you think is the guy for Jacksonville in the first round. Would you trade down? Would you stay at number one? Would you take a quarterback, even with this contract? You know, keep in mind, obviously, it's not easy to get off this contract. This isn't something where if Trevor Lawrence is really bad, and this is who he is now, that you can make that decision to move off him in the offseason. You're going to be stuck with it for a while. So just keep that in mind. But I'd love to hear what you guys think, some of your favorite prospects, guys that – maybe I haven't talked about before that you want to bring to my attention that maybe I can go scout. So with that all said, appreciate y'all being here. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday. Enjoy the game tonight. You probably already watched it, but I'll still say it. And finally, go Jags.